Good afternoon. And in this video, I'm going to deal with another uh, section from uh, Dan Corner's work, uh, Critique of Gary Whitman's Scholarship in King James Bible Onlyism. And uh, this section is dealing with the uh, King James Version Deity of Christ omissions. Now, of course, what Whitman could point out and show very clearly is that uh, these modern versions uh, omit uh, various, various, version, various verses that show uh, the deity of Christ. And uh, so the modern uh, Bible critics have to come by and uh, uh, say the King James Version does the same thing, which, of course, it doesn't. And uh, his argument here is that the, uh, uh, the King, King James Version actually uh, does it more than the NIV. He goes on here first, he says, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, does the Lord Jesus have a name or the name that's above all names? If you go by the King James Version, the Lord only has a name above every name. But if you go by the NIV, he has the name above every name. <laughs> and he quotes here from the um, Philippians 2.9. The fact is, a name means famous. And it's most famous uh, definitive uh, name. And um, if you go to 2 Samuel 8, 13, you see David had a name among all the nation. And uh, the NIV translate that, translates that as being famous. So a name is the correct, the correct translation there. Then he goes on to uh, go to Daniel 7, 14. It says the NIV uh, says that uh, uh, he, uh, from a Jesus Christ, supposed to be worshipped. They have worshipped him. And the, uh, King, you know, the King James has served him. Well, the NIV is the only one that has worshipped there. So the, um, they're going against uh, all the other translations as well and sticking something there. This still is the uh, 714. Daniel is dealing with the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ, not his deity. Uh, in John 118, uh, it says that the NIV shows that the uh, Jesus Christ is God. It says, no one has ever seen God, but God, the, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. And then... Uh, and he quotes the King James, no one has seen God in any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had to, uh, declared him. And he says, well, see, if you just say Son, you're denying the deity of Christ, but of course, it's the Word that became flesh, and that's who the Word is, is that he became the Son. And so uh, it, there's nothing uh, uh, hiding the deity of Jesus Christ at all there. John 1 here. Um, and some of the... Uh, NIV versions actually change it around and have Son in there as opposed to the God, uh, God. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, uh, the glory as with the only begotten the Father, full of grace and truth. Um, let's see. No man had seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. And uh, so we have the uh, connection there from uh, 114, John 114, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only, only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then, uh, and then your point points after that's the Son. Uh, no man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So uh, uh, the Son is the begotten Word, the Word who is, became flesh. And uh, so he, uh, he is, he is uh, God, clearly from John 1.1. 1, 1. Then it goes on to, uh, what about John 14.14? 14, 14, the uh, King James Bible, uh, it says, If you, ask, you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Uh, the modern versions have me in there. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. And um, this goes against, goes against, of course, John 16, 23, where it says he has the Father. And uh, he tries to make a point there saying that, uh, going to Acts 7, 59, when uh, King, the King James Bible went to Geneva, they both have, both have God there. And they, uh, Stephen calls upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when he and he sees him standing at the right hand of the Father, so um, both Geneva and the King James have added God in there in italics, uh, understanding the context that um, you don't pray pray to uh, uh, the uh, Son in this dispensation. Uh, you don't pray to Christ. You pray to pray to the Father, uh, and um, uh, in the name of the Son. 
And uh, so he goes on here and says, uh, um, by the way, he says, the Hagen Copeland Word Faith Club crowd denies praying directly to Jesus in contrast to Scripture. I uh, know they pray directly to the Holy Spirit. And that's why, that's their problem there. And that's where you get these problems. And you start praying to, praying to Jesus or praying to the Holy Spirit instead of the way God told us, told us to pray is pray to the Father in the name of the Son uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Then they go into the Gren, uh, Granville Sharp Greek grammar rule, and that's supposed to, uh, Titus 2.13, that's supposed to, they're supposed to have a, a better reading there, but in fact, uh, what they always do is they ignore context. If you go to Titus 2.10, uh, makes it very clear uh, what the 2.13 is talking about. Not purlining, but showing all good vitality, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. So he says there that God is our Savior. Then you go to 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So they clearly, by looking at uh, Titus 2.10, you see God is our Savior, and clearly that uh, now uh, uh, the Savior is Jesus Christ, so therefore he is God, he is our Savior. And um, so there's really no problem there. So you have a great God, but he's our Savior. He's our Savior, Jesus Christ, and that's a personal Savior. Um, you see, same thing with Second Peter uh, 1, 1. Where he says, uh, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them have attained like precious, precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior and Jesus Christ. Excuse me. So uh, uh, it's the righteousness of God, but he's our Savior. See, God doesn't come your Savior to, to uh, Jesus Christ. You have to believe Jesus Christ as your Savior. <clears throat> That's a personal, personal relationship. Um, so uh, when we read that, you see that Jesus Christ is God. There's no confusion on that. And uh, he is our Savior. Um, let's see. Man, there's no confusion on that. Anybody can ex uh, explain that. In fact, you could use, you say about the Jehovah's Witnesses, and uh, you could use uh, their own, um, uh, their own Bible to explain that uh, and show that to them. Uh, that because uh, they read as King James reads mostly, and we say that uh, Jesus Christ is God and He's our Savior. Um, he goes on here more about uh, if you go, for instance, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Grand Blue Sharp, uh, there's nothing of uh, no problem in the King James Bible. We look at Galatians 1 4. Uh, Galatians 1 4, we deal with this. Um, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So God and he's our Father. He's both God and our Father. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.3 which is the way the, uh, the King James puts it and there's no confusion when you're reading it. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.3 Uh, one three, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience, of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. He's our Father. He's God and He's our Father. That's a relationship issue there uh, in Philippians 4.20. And that's what the Bible is stressing here. It's stressing the relationship. He's our Savior. He's our God. Uh, Philippians. Let me go back. Philippians 4.20. Um, uh, 420 now unto God unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever amen so he's God and he's our Father that's a relationship issue we emphasize on that point um, so the uh, there's no problem of, of thinking it's two different people at all uh, when you look at the context uh, let's see here uh, the King James also reduces the Holy Spirit as, as in, uh, itself Romans 8 16 and Romans 8 uh, 26. Both those cases, uh, the uh, the uh, nouns in the neuter, Greek has agenda, and in those cases, uh, the uh, King James correctly translates agenda as a neuter. It refers to Jesus as a holy thing, Luke 135. Again, that's referring back to uh, Genesis 315, the seed. 
and that's why that connection is made there. Um, he goes on here, he says the King James admitted all words also. Um, Jude 4 as only sovereign God. In fact, um, he, the um, Jude NIV has denied Jesus our only sovereign and Lord. But they leave out the word God. The King James uh, Bible has denying the only Lord, uh, our, denying the only Lord God in our Lord Jesus Christ. So they leave out the word God out. <clears throat> and the NIV is the only one that has sovereign in there. Um, you see here again, Luke 10, 21, the King James Version omitted uh, the word holy, but the NIV has included it. This is important since in spirit, the King James Version would mean in his own spirit, not through the Holy Spirit, which is the correct reading. That's why it's a small s there. He's referring to his human spirit, and that is uh, not, to, not to the Holy Spirit. Um, let's see here. And then, for example, some petty stuff here. Uh, for example, using the one word and found first of all, he's 4 9. Uh, this is um, uh, instead of using uh, the word of, he, he, he sells a toward of, of God uh, to love one another. And that's just a way, old way of saying we are taught of God by God uh, to love one another. So it's, that's not hard. Anybody read, reads, we understand they mean uh, that it's taught by God. And that's supposed to be uh, some, you know, major issue. And uh, again, so that's that's the that's it. That's that's what he that's his evidence against the King James Bible saying that it that, uh, that leaves out some missions. And again, this is uh, just more uh, nonsense uh, from the. Uh, uh, anti King James uh, fanatics uh, that they they actually show they can't read uh, clean clear English uh, they uh, uh, twist the scriptures they leave out the uh, clear scripture that uh, shows God that Jesus Christ is God in first John first Timothy first Timothy three sixteen praise the mystery of God is God was manifest in the flesh and of course first John five seven and the uh, attacks continue all throughout the all these modern versions. Where they uh, try to demean the Lord Jesus Christ every chance they can, and that's what it just shows in her work. Uh, when it says the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll take out the word Lord. If it says Jesus Christ, that they go out, they'll take out Jesus. They'll do anything they can to um, demean and to uh, uh, attack uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in any subtle way they can. And the fact that they uh, include uh, the deity of Christ is somewhere in their, in their Bibles. Uh, is only because they have to make it to make it appear to be a Bible, and therefore uh, you can find it. You can find the deity of Jesus Christ in the New World Translation. That doesn't mean that's a, the correct translation of the Bible. So uh, again, uh, I'll con uh, continue on with another uh, lesson uh, as soon as uh, I am able. And uh, again, showing that uh, these guys just uh, attacking the Word of God, the King James Bible. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Amen. Thank you.